Hello YouTubers, this is Night Phoenix here with the first tutorial on my trading card deck building board game called Base Based. Now the point of Base Based is to progress your armies across a 6x6 six six tile field to get to the other side and defeat your opponent's passive leader. Sure, there are already lots of questions, so let's get into things. First of all, these six pawns, as I call them, represent a legion. They are indicated by a number. This one is, of course, one, and are attributed to each of the six columns. A legion consists of up to five units. Uh, units come in several different classes. There are the. Oops, sorry. Let's focus that. There's the army class, along with the siege weapon class and the monster class. This particular one is an army class. It is called the archer. It has several stats, and I will go through them momentarily. Now the board has several pieces on it. I currently just have my half of the board set up and these pieces are known as movement cost tile tokens. And each color is attributed to a certain number, ergo a certain cost. The white ones have a cost of one, yellow is two, and black is three. These are determined by the field card. The bottom right corner shows the setup for the board, while this here, the base, is determined by this base diagram here. And in the center is always the keep where your king or queen resides. The king or queen is referred to in the game as your passive leader. There are two leaders, the active and the passive. The cards do not distinguish, but rather you, the player, determine which leader you want to be which. Now, the point of the passive leader, besides of course being the king or queen, is to determine how much production of power tokens you are producing each turn. This is based off of their level times two. So level one produces two power tokens. To just go through the card a little bit, we have the order count. In this case, it's three, indicated by this pointing hand icon. Orders are used to summon units, move troops, or to shuffle them between legions. These stats here are attack, health, and counter. A leader's stats are based off of their level times two plus any additional boosts. And this indicates the level count of at which point the leader effect will take effect. In this case, it's level four. In order to level up your leader, you simply have to pay for the cost of power tokens. So in order to get from level 1 to level 2, you pay 2 tokens, or to get from level 2 to level 3, you pay 3, and so forth. Now your active leader and your passive leader both have effects, which of course take place when you level them up. You can only level up a leader once per turn. Now these power tokens that you have are placed on a territory card. This is the Fire Territory card, in this case known as the Badlands. And this is a construct known as the Gold Mine, which can be placed on a territory card by paying its cost, in which case is three. Therefore, you take the three power tokens you have, and you can put them into this nice little leather bag I have for you. Of course, you want strong armies in order to defeat your opponents. 
the dreaded blue. <laughs> of course, you could be player blue or player red. In this case, I am player red, and I have set up, again, my half of the board. And I already also have several army units already summoned. They are all the archer. I have a very limited uh, deck roster at the moment. I apologize for that. But to simply go through the archer card, here on the bottom tells you it's a unit army. The side has skills. This is ranged and targeted. I will go into skills in a later video. This is the type. It's a tornado-like icon, and it's for wind, or as it's called in the game, mistral. And then here are the stats. So a 2 in attack, 2 in health, 0 in counter, a 1 in speed, and 2 out of 3 for the cost. Now, the 2 out of 3 is probably a little bit confusing to you, considering that the construct just had a 3. What this means is that 2 out of the 3 power tokens used to summon this have to be of its type. Its type is wind. Now, if you recall, the Badlands card that we had was the fire type. And the archer, again, is wind. So, these three tokens are not enough to summon your archer. You have to spend an additional two in order to summon the archer because you have to spend power tokens to convert them into the correct type. And so let's see, we have five here total. Um, you can either save up your power tokens or you can level up again your passive leader in order to create more power tokens each turn. And to just kind of go over the zones, we have the you know, deck zone where all of your units are. We have your resource zone where things like constructs and artifacts are found. We have two types of artifacts. There is artifact enhance and trap. The difference is really that trap cards are played during battle and enhance are not. They both have a cost and a rank. This is a rank 3, so you can only play it after you've unlocked the third column, which is done by moving your pawn piece to the other side, defeating the sentry, which doesn't have an actual like token or pawn or anything, it's just implied to be there, and the health and stats are all like the same for each of the sentries, depending on their column. So these first two have all 10s, these are all 20s, and these are all 30s. When attacking, you add up all the stats of your legion and order an attack if your opponent had a legion. And their range is based off of their number. So this one's one. So this one would attack their number one. Let me just reset that quick. And their movement is based off of this little icon here for speed which is a little man running, and it's based off of the lowest in the legion, in this case, which is one. So one order moves your unit one tile, and you have to subtract it from the movement cost, which I explained earlier in the video. So each turn you're gonna, you know, draw cards from either pile. This is a dragon, you will see if you can summon it. If not, you can just keep it in your hand. I'll just place it here for a moment. And, yeah, then you carry out orders, you move your pieces, you attack your opponents. And the last thing I want to get into here is the Legendary Monster. And really quickly, Legendary Monsters have very powerful stats, and they require several sacrifices. This specific one is dragons and, and a gold mine. It also has an effect, and has a sacrifice count, and, of course, skills. And that will be all for now. Thank you for watching. This ends the video.